The Duchess of Cambridge joined her husband Prince William, and in-laws Prince Charles and Camilla, Duchess of Cornwall, in watching the first airing of the new film No Time to Die. The quartet were seen on the red carpet meeting some of the cast from the 25th James Bond installment, including lead Daniel Craig, and others including Rami Malek, Lee Sado, and Larsana Lynch, at the Royal Albert Hall, in London. Kate particularly stood out as she wowed fans in her incredible dress, which was made up of an embellished gold cape that featured architectural shoulders and a flowing train. It was a move away from Kate's more traditional, low-key style, and dazzled as she topped the outfit off with a pair of circular gold earrings and an updo. The Cambridges have been regular fixtures for James Bond premieres in recent years, attending the 2012 opening of Skyfall, and 2015's first showing of Spectre. But Kate's choice of outfit was hailed as a statement of her intent for her future role in the firm, according to royal commentator Daniela Elza. She noted in an article for the New Zealand Herald last month, Kate's Bond dress was a wild veering off from that very predictable course with the Duchess eschewing her usual oh-so-pretty look for a bespoke structured gold gown from Jenny Packham. This was unequivocally the most striking and glamorous get-up she has ever worn. Contrast this Jenny Packham number with the floaty baby blue creation, also from the London designer, which Kate wore to the Spectre premiere in 2015. The difference could not be more glaring. Ms. Elza added, this wasn't just a dress. This was a declaration of intent and a very apparent power move on Kate's part. The dress, Ms. Elza concluded, was a glorious display of confidence that telegraphed a level of comfort in herself from a woman who is inherently shy. Kate is often regarded as a worldwide style icon, with the outfits she wears often selling out within hours of her being pictured in them. However, on her wedding day, Kate's choice of dress sparked a row that raged for some time inside her family, as she struggled to agree on who would design the garment. The 39-year-old, who wed Prince William in 2011, was reportedly unable to agree with other members of the Middleton family, including Mother Carol, over the designer of the now iconic wedding dress. Kate would eventually opt for Sarah Burton, who made the dress for Alexander McQueen, and it wowed viewers across the world, who tuned in to witness their historic nuptials. Dan Wooten, a royal commentator, claimed, however, that it was far from an easy decision for Kate to make. Speaking on the 2017 Amazon Prime documentary Kate Middleton, Working Class to Windsor Trademark, Mr. Wooten said, Believe me, the decision about what dress designer all of the Middletons were going to use raged for some time. It was a really difficult decision for them. So for example, Carol Middleton she was going to have a dress designed by Lind Kakirak. And then she shoved it out of the way at the last minute because all these women knew picking a dress designer was so important. The wedding dress itself was described by fashion designer Ben Delisi as being youthfully regal, and Kate would wear another Sarah Burton number for the reception after the ceremony. This dress featured a circle skirt and diamante detailing, which again stunned those lucky enough to attend the evening function. Mr. Delisi added of her wedding dress, it was modern with a classic twist to it, which was fantastic because I didn't want Kate to lose touch with Kate, in the whole pageantry of this occasion. I think Sarah Burton for Alexander McQueen did a sublime job. I think the lace was so effortlessly executed that it was almost as if she had a white tattoo all the way down her arm, and the fine buttons. And then you saw that quintessential McQueen detail on the ruff of the spine. Prince William, and Kate, Duchess of Cambridge are portrayed in a new US TV film with the royals appearing as a villain and a peacemaker respectively in a retelling of events about the royal family. Named Harry and Meghan, Escaping the Palace, the film is a fictionalized telling of the relationship between Prince Harry and Meghan Markle following their decision to step away from the monarchy. It is the third installment of a series by Lifetime, a US channel, and charts the move of the couple to the US using lookalikes to play members of the royal family. The controversial TV film has come under scrutiny especially for moments when the actors playing Harry and his older brother Prince William are shown arguing over racism claims. During the film, Kate, played by Laura Mitchell, 
is seen asking William, played by Jordan Whalen, for more PDA during public appearances, a moment which town and country TMS royal writer Annie Goldsmith said left her feeling uncomfortable. Her feelings are likely because traditionally public displays of affection are against royal etiquette rules, especially when it comes to reigning monarchs or heirs to the throne. While there are moments that royal couples have acted more informally by wrapping their arms around each other, holding hands, or kissing in public, this is rare. Protocol implies that royal engagements, where the royals act as representatives of the crown, are an TMT appropriate times for affection. As heir to the throne, future King William is said to take royal etiquette more seriously than other royals, though the pair have been witnessed in moments of PDA in the past. The couple was seen sharing a celebratory hug together at the 2012 Olympic Games, and in the same year, Kate was seen congratulating the Duke of Cambridge with a kiss at the Audi Polo Challenge. They TM they also been seen putting their arms around each other on a small number of occasions including at the Howthcliffe Walk in Dublin in 2020. Elsewhere in the televised film, the couple are portrayed joking about starting a YouTube channel which their real-life royal counterparts have actually done. The Duke and Duchess of Cambridge launched their YouTube channel in May 2021, and currently have 621k followers. Their first video is a compilation of the couple at numerous events entitled Welcome to our official YouTube channel. Kate joined the royal family a decade ago upon marrying Prince William. Over the past 10 years, she built a portfolio of charities and patronages and has set the basis for her legacy-making Royal Foundation Center for Early Childhood, launched in May. Moreover, she has become an increasingly important player for the firm, which between 2019 and 2020 lost three working royals. However, her role is far from being fully defined, as royal commentator Camilla Tomini has warned Kate, has yet to play a pivotal role in the monarchy as both the wife and the mother of a future king. Writing in the Daily Telegraph's weekly newsletter Your Royal Appointment, Ms. Tomini added, yes, the Duchess of Cornwall will be the next queen, on paper at least, but when it comes to ushering in 21st century royalty, Kate will rule the waves. As the wife of the Prince of Wales, Camilla is to become queen consort by law when Prince Charles accedes to the throne. However, Clarence House said in early March last year the Duchess of Cornwall hadn't changed her mind over using that title. Prince Charles's office first issued a statement regarding the Queen Consort title following his marriage with Camilla in 2005, saying she intended to use the title HRH the Princess Consort following the end of the Queen's reign. In March 2020, the office told the Daily Star, the intention is for the Duchess to be known as Princess Consort when the Prince accedes to the throne. On the other hand, it is unlikely Kate will not take on the title of Queen Consort when the time for Prince William to become King comes. The Cambridges are also expected to become Prince and Princess of Wales albeit these titles are not inherited but assigned by the monarch, which means the decision will be in the hand of King Charles. Ms. Tomini's praise came after Kate dazzled on the red carpet at the Royal Albert Hall on Tuesday evening. The Duchess joined her husband, Charles and Camilla for the world premiere of the latest James Bond film, No Time to Die. The four royals met members of the film's cast and production before the screening. Among them, there was Daniel Craig, who following the 25th Bond film is leaving the role. Shaking hands with the Duchess, the actor couldn't help but compliment her. He said, you look jolly lovely. Kate donned a custom sparkling gold sequined Jenny Packham cape gown, paired with gold earrings by Onitar, which she had previously worn during her 2019 tour of Pakistan. The dress appeared to be a nod to the outfit donned by Princess Diana in 1985, when she attended the premiere of the Bond film A View to a Kill. The late royal wore for the special screening in Leicester Square a shimmering Bruce Oldfield gown with a deep V neckline, architectural shoulders and a flowing train. On her first glitzy royal outing in several months, Kate also styled her hair in a sophisticated updo. 
Camilla also added sparkles to the night as she opted for a pale blue corseted chiffon dress with silver embroidery by Bruce Oldfield. On the other hand, Charles and William chose to wear black tuxedos. On the following day, the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge continued to shine under the spotlight as they visited Derry Londonderry for the first time, where they visited Ulster University's McGee campus and spoke to students and staff. Later in the day, they also headed to City of Derry Rugby Club, 